Welcome back to the plenary room. I'm sure that uh, we lost some of our colleagues in the coffee coffee lounge at the, the ex exhibition, which seems to be quite popular. Uh, it was really exciting journey over the last uh, about two hour and a half, two hours. Um, I hope that you enjoyed as much as uh, as I enjoyed. It was really diverse. Uh, our moderators, who I will now reveal the secret, are the former students uh, at our first course on uh, online moderation in diplomacy and global governance. They had a quite demanding task uh, to moderate short session, 15 minute session, with the help of our track uh, leaders and track directors. Now, what we will do now, we will uh, put all of these threads together, technology, security, moderation, uh, behavior and diplomacy tracks into the nice tapestry uh, and then we will uh, move gradually towards the closure of this uh, uh, meeting and this meeting is just the beginning of our research and studies and the question of future meetings. Now without further ado I would like to uh, invite our track um, leads to uh, bring a summary what's happened over these four 15-minute sessions in each of the tracks. And we will start uh, uh, with uh, Arvin, or is he here in the room? Arvin, if not Arvin, Vlada, Vlada, Vlado, please go ahead. Vlada was leading security track. Yeah, thank you, Jovan. Um, and thanks for all of you for joining the security track, even though I must admit people were mainly shy to uh, speak. Uh, there were a couple of vid video, but rarely anyone except for I think Carlos and may maybe a few who took the courage to take the floor. But there were really good uh, inputs in the chat uh, and quite uh, uh, diverse of topics. So running quickly through what we had, the main security, there were a lot of polls uh, asked uh, to the people. And uh, starting with the first one, what were the main security risks for them? Privacy was actually a major, one of the major issues. And then uh, intruders and, and uh, other security aspects. Uh, there were some um, measures uh, that were suggested how to prevent such as policy approaches, whether the GDPR, European uh, data protection uh, regulation applies and so on, whether there is a transparency of how the platform works, technical aspects, encryption and so on. And uh, there was a broader set of risks related to these data leaks or, or data protection was actually human rights uh, implications and so on. In the session which was focusing on Zoom bombing, <clears throat> we had another poll which uh, was uh, looking into concerns from Zoom bombing and actually it was uh, again mainly confidentiality which was the top concern but then also sharing of the inappropriate content and there was some sort of light misunderstanding whether political uh, content would fit into inappropriate or it's actually more of a porn uh, jumping and so on. Uh, then um, it there were concerns that um, uh, uh, anyone can, can uh, leak the documents, leak what is in. Uh, and there were also some sort of, uh, we, we tried to ask a fish for experiences about Zoom bombing, but there were not many. There was actually very few. There was, and most of them were mainly about trolling rather than any, any more serious damage. Um, in the session, which was focused on the... Uh, discretion of discussion and the Chatham House rule in particular, uh, for most over 80% of participants, discretion of the meeting was actually either important or very important, which, which shows that we're not willing to give up on, on this sort of uh, um, ability to, to uh, discuss open in a, within the Chatham House rule uh, framework. Uh, it was also concluded that it's harder than ever to do the Chatham House rules. Uh, there was a um, the risk that anyone can simply now record the meeting, even in Zoom now, any of us can record a meeting, uh, was underlined that um, probably we have to make it make sure that, again, we clearly emphasize to participants that the Chatham House rule is in zone. Uh, we can do only as much with technical means to limit what how people can leak. But the bottom line of the discussion was that uh, all of that boils down to the trust into the people that are in the room and that we simply have to trust uh, each other. And at the end, a uh, bit on data protection and confidentiality was quite a good exchange. We noticed that the data we want to protect or need to protect is, of course, the conversation in audio and video, is the recording, it's the chat, 
um, shared screens and documents. Sometimes we even accidentally share something. Uh, then we, we are looking into how to the service that are that are giving us the, the communications, we should be looking into where the data are stored, how are they stored, whether there is encryption or not, uh, who is the company, what is the jurisdiction in, in hands, um, uh, how can the, doc, the, the data be used or misused, so what are the policies. Some of the risks were mainly, so who, who is the main uh, risk factor actually, it was underlined in the poll that the companies which might sell our data or the competition are probably the biggest risk for us, but also the state. So the state surveillance was quite high on the list. And to conclude, um, we looked into a couple of measures, such as policy aspects, again, looking into policy uh, documents, into accountability, where one suggestion was that actually the market will solve uh, the solution, that will be the solution for those that will, that will uh, persist out of the platforms. Encryption as a tool, uh, digital hygiene, maintaining our computers safe, and also for all the interlocutors and to conclude that the demand by users actually is needed for more for more secure more private uh, conversation and that is something we have to work on so that the platforms would actually follow on that uh, floor back to you thank you vlada it was interesting that security and discretion was raised also in other threads i just visited a few rooms uh, it was it featured on a few occasions in diplomacy diplomacy thread let's let's move now to 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 diplomacy and uh, hear from kat maybe starting with this link on discretion and the uh, question of protecting um, 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 sort of uh, confidentiality of negotiation and then obviously hearing from you what was discussed in the diplomacy track mm -hmm. kat Thank you, Johan. Definitely. So security actually came up also in the diplomacy track throughout all of our discussions, really emphasizing the importance uh, of security and uh, confidentiality. There was some element of trust in, in the online tools we have available now, but there was a skepticism. And also the question, do we need actually, do we need to build new platforms? Do we need dedicated platforms? Uh, developed for the with diplomacy in mind or with specific international organizations in mind. To kind of sum up the rich discussion we had, uh, it's a big challenge, but uh, let me try. So first we started with uh, looking at blended uh, meetings. And as we heard in the introduction, blended meetings, so combining in situ and online might be the future of meetings and the future of diplomatic interaction. Many people in the discussion basically said, yes, it is important to have blended meetings and mainly for inclusiveness. But then when we tried to unpack this, we discovered that uh, it's important for inclusiveness, but we have to get it right. So we have to make sure that those being physically in the same space and those uh, joining remotely are on the same level, are uh, on, on the same footing, are equal both formally and, and in practice. And that's a big challenge in terms of moderation, but it's also a technological challenge. So people were in favor of blended meetings, but we're kind of saying, but we need to get it right. And at the moment, we're not quite there yet. Then we discussed protocol, also a very important element of diplomatic practice, if not the most important element. And we emphasize protocol is about tradition and tradition is something that is not gonna go away anytime soon. So as we move online, we can't do away with protocol. Um, everyone obviously had to move online because of the uh, COVID-19 crises, but there was an emphasis that there might be more resistance from diplomats uh, or at least a, a more skeptical perspective. Someone mentioned that as we move online, there might be the assumption of informality but in diplomacy, and again, going back to protocol rules, that's, that's a dangerous assumption. It's, it's simply uh, not true when we look at people who are uh, coming in as advisors or as experts. They're not on the same footing as representatives of states. We then said, okay, then it's a question of moderation and the chair really emphasizing these rules. And here the important point was, yes, but we need capacity building and uh, we need training. And actually we need a lot of people who are chairing in different capacities to make an online meeting work. Um, on procedure, again, yes, we can move certain aspects online, but we can't uh, move others online and different organizations have taken um, different approaches. And here the emphasis was again, we can't really recreate the elements of uh, inf the informal aspects of diplomacy, such as corridor meetings and coffee breaks online. And we experimented with this obviously in this meeting. 
but people said this is a big challenge and we need really find ways of how to recreate these uh, non-formal elements. Lastly, on translation and interpretation, we argued yeah, that yet, uh, yes, it is possible technologically to have translation and interpretation. And we need to be mindful of uh, linguistic diversity and inclusiveness. But then again, the point being, yes, but we need to get it right. Over to you, Johan. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Kat. This point, how to get it right, is extremely important. And it was mentioned during our discussion in technology track where we have a lot of exciting uh, opportunities and technologies, but how to, how to make it uh, applied uh, properly. Uh, is, if Arvin is with us, I know he was busy with fixing some technological problems of our meeting. He can make a quick summary of our technology track. Arvin. Hi, uh, thanks, Johan. Yes, I'm here. Uh, we were actually stuck in the technology room discussing a few more, uh, few more possible outcomes for the future of online meetings. Uh, we focused, as, as the track says, on some technologies that will, uh, that will emerge or are still there, already there. Uh, we started with kind of um, looking at how does uh, organization or individuals actually choose a platform to use on, or for online participation. And we heard from our audience that mostly they're doing it uh, through research or uh, by advice of someone who is already using it, inter-organization, or, uh, or have a positive experience with it. So basically we see that, uh, that they, there is a need for informed decision. Even if we try many platforms, at the end we may end up to the, to the one which we know it's gonna work well, we know it because someone else was using it or testing it. So that was the first part on, on uh, how, to choose a, how to choose a platform and what was the important part on a second on a second presentation, we had a great, uh, great presentation from Sharna uh, here. She looked at the additional tools, additional apps uh, or softwares or everything that can be added to the effective, uh, uh, to the effective online participation. For example, uh, Slido or, or Mentimeter or tools which can be uh, integrated outside of Zoom, Webex and others. We also heard that there are security concerns around Zoom. Many organizations are not using it. We heard that many organizations are uh, going to Microsoft Solutions, uh, which is Teams and others. And um, in a second part of, of our discussion, we, uh, we thought and think about the future. Uh, what can be emerging technologies that can help in online participation? Uh, we, on uh, holograms and mixed augmented reality, we came to the uh, conclusion that this, uh, this field might be unified in some kind of mist, mixed reality in future, uh, presenting, uh, presenting several, let's say, several realities during the day. So not just augmented or virtual, but kind of a mixed, mixed thing of, of, of uh, reality that can be of a help. And in the fourth session with Michael, uh, we look at the particular AI tools that can help us in um, mostly in a field of diplomacy and related to the public events, but in other uh, other events. We we uh, had a, an interesting poll there where 100% 100% of our participants voted that technology will provide help for the future of online meetings. So there was no doubt on, on that from from our uh, from our audience. Uh, one last note is that again we are keen and waiting for uh, for uh, features which that can be they are here now but will be enhanced in the near future, such as translation, automatic uh, translation, speech to text, text to speech, and other AI powered function for online meetings that can uh, come uh, handy. Uh, we will, of course, write a report on all of this and send it to you after the, after the meeting. So, Jovan, back to you. Thank you, Arvin. This is important. Uh, don't try to take, a, you can track the notes, but we'll make a summary report with the links to what uh, was mentioned today. You will have also a summary, summary video, video report, uh, and that will be available soon. <clears throat> what is important, what uh, Arvin mentioned, we have quite an intensive discussion, brainstorming, about possibility of developing 
open source online platform for uh, online meetings. And there are some open source like Jitsi, like a big blue button and the other things. Because uh, as more uh, public institutions are shifting uh, online, there is a risk that institutions like UN or national parliaments or local parliaments may basically be hosted by uh, proprietary platforms as it is happening now. Therefore, there is an interesting discussion which is related to the broader context of, uh, let's say, democracy, robustness of dem democracy, protecting the public space, uh, which is the core of the, co core of the um, um, modern societies. And that discussion is brainstorming is going on in Diplo with a few partners about possibility of developing or Jitsi or Big Boo Button on some initiatives for creating robust uh, public space for diplomatic meetings, uh, meetings of parliaments and local communities. And congratulations, Arvin, for, uh, for um, um, you and your team uh, making this experiment so successful today. And now uh, we move now to the, let's say, software side, uh, emotional social side, and we'll start with uh, uh, Teresa. Teresa, what type of uh, emotional intelligence do we need for uh, online meetings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one we need a lot. Uh, there were four uh, issues that we discussed um, uh, in the behavior track uh, of this conference, and we could uh, very soon observe that they were kind of spilling in into each other. And uh, hearing also summaries of my colleagues, I can say uh, that many issues, of course, are interrelated uh, with things that uh, have been discussed in other tracks. Uh, the first session uh, that we had uh, concentrated on distractions, how our attention span varies between online and uh, in situ or face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, and um, I think also from our personal experiences, uh, it's clear uh, that uh, it does vary. It's more challenging. We did a little kind of experiment and did a little poll only two minutes into the session checking how many times have you already checked your phone since this session has started? You know, in our case, two minutes ago, 48% uh, have checked their phones one to three times in those first two minutes of the session. So that kind of illustrates the challenges because of course it's much easier to kind of hide uh, your um, um, uh, lack of attention um, uh, in an online, uh, online meeting. Uh, but on the other hand, we also brought up the issues that this is, not necessarily that different from face-to-face -face meetings because you can easily lose people uh, in a face-to-face -face meetings as well. How? Maybe you're not well prepared. Maybe the substance uh, isn't solid enough. So um, it's not that face-to-face uh, -face you would always uh, be able uh, to maintain a kind of attention of your, um, of your colleagues. Um, so um, we also uh, touched upon the issue of uh, politeness and kind of social control, uh, that uh, it's also important uh, that uh, how we kind of portray ourselves, how engaged do we try uh, and uh, show others uh, to be. Uh, this session also fed very well uh, to the next issue that we discussed in the behavior track, and that was to see and not to be seen online, the psychology of face-to-face -face interaction and body language. So um, first of all, we all kind of acknowledge that we do miss face-to-face um, -face interactions because meetings per definition are very human and, uh, and uh, very social. Yet it is possible to replicate uh, many uh, of the elements online because we can control again, you know, how whether we maintain eye contact or as uh, Richard Hill <laughs> noted very well, eye contact with a green little dot on our screens that I'm trying to hypnotize right now as well to keep the eye contact with you but we also control our body language. Um, most people in our poll said that they do prefer video for uh, online meetings uh, because it, um, uh, it makes them more engaged uh, and pay attention more. So that's maybe one good practice that I think in our new normal, uh, we could really in, uh, look into, let us use videos um, more uh, because the meetings are more efficient in that case. Uh, the third uh, issue that we covered was on corridor chats and whether online meetings have killed impromptu conversations. Um, we made a little poll uh, where 74% of the participants in our session uh, acknowledged that they come to meetings for both the substance as well as the networking. And um, um, a result that might or might not be surprising, 6% of those who were in our session acknowledged they come to sessions only for the networking element. Uh, 
So how can we kind of replicate this experience online that um, that also for these aspects, we, we get something out of the meetings. Uh, many of us have shared our experience with using um, a kind of parallel tracks uh, of communication, but it uh, doesn't come like, let's say using WhatsApp or, or Skype uh, or private chat functions in rooms. Um, on the other hand, uh, sometimes it cannot replicate what you would be able to tell somebody face to face in a verbal way. So there are some challenges. Uh, there was uh, some uh, suggestions to look into platforms and tech platforms um, uh, and um, kind of having a flexible solution how participants can use um, uh, or set up you know, private rooms for, uh, for some bi bilateral conversations. So that definitely comes timely uh, as you, Jovan, have, has, have mentioned that uh, there might be uh, some looking into a new platform. And lastly, uh, the session on e-politeness and how to handle long speeches, tech glitches, and other interruptions, again, highlighted the role um, and the uh, very big responsibility of a moderator uh, who, uh, who must handle uh, issues that always uh, uh, come up and uh, are not always uh, really planned. Um, most people uh, considered in our little poll um, that politeness differences offline and online are kind of similar or somewhat similar. Uh, as of offline, uh, even online, uh, we deal with different um, uh, kind of um, etiquettes, uh, so to say. Uh, one participant uh, in a very, um, uh, very kind of uh, punchy uh, comment said that there is unfortunately no mute button in real life. So uh, that exists online and we might miss it uh, in offline meetings sometimes. Uh, when asked uh, on sharing experience of impoliteness that participants have come across, um, very often these have been elements of, let's say, tech nature, uh, something that we are still getting used to as we are moving online, such as not muting yourself upon entry or admin, not unmuting others uh, to be able uh, to speak. Uh, I would like to thank excellent moderators in our sessions and uh, back to the main room to you, Jovan. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Teresa. Now you you made me really concentrate on the green light. It's uh, it's now will be my next obsession, you know. And it was really really rich discussion, which also reflects what we discussed during the, our online course: the question of emotion, behavioral aspect. And uh, thank you for this great mapping from the, let's say, deep psychology to the behavioral um, um, uh, ticks and uh, tricks and uh, and the tips. Now, uh, you uh, may uh, make a nice, uh, nice uh, sort of intro for the Natasha who will summarize the uh, discussion in moderation track. Therefore, we, are, we have now build up from different tracks and now with moderation we'll conclude this nice tapestry of discussion today. Natasha. Thank you, Jovan. Um, actually, uh, as you already mentioned, a lot of the things that uh, Teresa has um, has said uh, feed very nicely into the discussion that we uh, had in the moderation room. Even though uh, some of our participants were somewhat shy, this uh, does not mean that we did not have some uh, excellent inputs uh, into the discussion. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our uh, moderators, uh, Kim, uh, Prianti, and Sally, who did an excellent job in um, keeping the discussion. So we first uh, kick off the discussion with a question whether moderators are born or bred. And the majority of our participants uh, said that they are bred. They uh, focused on the qualities that these uh, moderators uh, should have and two uh, things uh, came up. The first one was that uh, moderators should be quick on their feet. They should be quick to react and in certain situations improvise when things uh, don't go as planned. The second was that they should be knowledgeable about the topic in order to um, plan ahead of the discussion, um, identify appropriate speakers and uh, keep the discussion going. Something that was um, very important that came up in this discussion was a comment made that um, eye contact and physical communication are very difficult in uh, the online world and that this is something that is a lot easier to maintain in the physical world. I think this is something that has already been uh, addressed in the in the online course and um, is something uh, that we are aware of. The second discussion uh, focused on the surprises that can happen during online meetings. Um, 
things were listed uh, that were listed include tech difficulties, unpredictable agenda for uh, participants taking uh, talking for uh, for too long. And uh, an interesting comment was actually made that uh, badly prepared online meetings are a lot more difficult to endure than offline meetings. Uh, this is something that uh, struck me as very interesting. We also had a session on time management and how to uh, manage uh, time during online meetings. This was, I think this reflects uh, really well uh, our today's meeting, given that we had um, 15 minutes per session on five different topics. Um, participants pointed out that the agenda is essential to this. Intervening, uh, also interrupting and intervening when the speaker goes over time is something that is crucial with regards to time management. Also having, um, having a detailed um, scenario planned ahead of the meeting and uh, sticking to the uh, allotted speaking time is something that came up. From a more uh, general perspective with regards to online meetings, uh, a few points uh, that are very uh, relevant uh, came up. Uh, the first one was that um, an interesting comment that was made that Zoom is not easily available to everyone and that in certain countries, Zoom has been banned, um, uh, the use of Zoom has been banned. And um, they, um, inputs were provided on the alternatives uh, that have been used in order to address this issue. One was the use of WhatsApp and connecting uh, the audio from WhatsApp to the microphone in during an online meeting. This was something that was, uh, this, that was discussed. Um, uh, there was also discussion on the polls and surveys and the role that they play during online meetings. It was noted that they are very good icebreakers um, and that they can help get the discussion going and engage the audience. Um, and the last one was uh, e-politeness that was mentioned by Teresa and um, it was noted that it basically boils down to respect for those who have taken their time to participate in the meeting. This would be Thank all you. from the moderation session. Thank you, Natasha. Great, great. Another great session. Now, we will hear from Katerina. Katerina had a difficult task to manage the coffee lounge and there were a lot of interesting things happening here, but Katerina will have only one minute to summarize it. And after that, we'll hear from Andriana, summary of your uh, questions. Katerina, over to yes. you. Yes. Hello. Thank you, Jovan. Uh, I have to be brief because I have to to the coffee lounge. I hope all of you who joined our coffee lounge had um, had fun and a great time and, and a pleasant chat in one of our coffee break rooms. I really in, enjoyed our speed networking session uh, where participants have been assigned to a couple of virtual tables or breakout rooms where, where they got to know each other and had a chat over, over a cup of coffee. Uh, since we'll have another coffee break room shortly, in about a minute or two, I encourage you to join us, especially in the speed networking session, but in, also in the in the in the rest of the rooms, to have a speed uh, con conversation with your fellow uh, participants. Over to you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Katarina, for this great experiment, uh, and uh, good luck with the coffees now when you will have many participants. Andriana, you were you have been following the this chat. What is the summary from the text? Uh, a chat dynamics uh, during this session. Over to you. Thank you, Jovan. The summary of uh, this chat is, will uh, the participants get the summary of this entire conference? That is something that, is, that has been uh, repeated multiple times, the summary uh, that our uh, track leads just uh, brought out and uh, the recording of the entire uh, conference. The question has been asked so many times that I'm certain that it's not just politeness and that our participants are truly satisfied with today's uh, experience. We did get a few questions. Uh, one of the questions was uh, which track was the most visited track, uh, which was the most interested, interesting to the participants. Uh, Sandrine asked uh, how is multilateral diplomacy uh, going to work now as deals were often uh, get done in the corridors. So. Now we don't uh, have those anymore. Uh, and um, I think there was another question. Uh, yes, uh, we had feedback from Eric who said that it was a bit hard cognitively to uh, switch between sessions, which were only 15 minutes long and switching between tracks was uh, not uh, as easy as we might have uh, thought. And another uh, something that we have discussed before is what is the established code of dressing for the moderator and for the uh, attendees? That will be all, Jovan, from me. 
Thank you. Thank you, um, Andriana. We will we'll wrapping up uh, this conference and I will ask uh, Vlada to display his uh, mentee uh, with, um, with a call for you to provide um, um, a sort of um, your takeaways from this conference. This was, as you can see, a very interesting exercise of new type of events, dynamic, and um, you can type uh, menti.com and you have a code and you can provide your comments now or later on, depending on your available time. Uh, you will receive in the follow-up summary uh, um, of the session, you will receive recording, and we will have uh, quite a few follow-up leads. As the president of the canton indicated in the first uh, session, uh, Geneva will uh, facilitate discussion on the future of meetings and uh, our ConfTech club uh, uh, online and there will be physical one at our building and WMO will uh, facilitate experiments in this new type of bl blended or hybrid uh, meetings. We will also focus on the question of access for people with disabilities. It was a clear question Eric mentioned and then a few other colleagues and uh, we'll put uh, enormous efforts on it. We'll also probably next meeting will be hosted on our open source platform. Uh, next meeting on the future of the meetings, which this is the first in the series. And uh, we will be basically uh, revisiting all of these five tracks, technological, security, uh, emotional or behavioral moderation and diplomacy. By the way, answer to the question which track was the most attended was the diplomatic diplomatic track. Uh, this was a great journey today. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all of you. I would like to thank our uh, students who will have a graduation ceremony in 10 minutes in this room who attended the first online course on online moderation and uh, in diplomacy and global governance. 40 of them um, uh, completed the course and the most of them were moderators uh, today. Therefore, this conference was application of their skills in vivo. And th this was fascinating experience over one last month. We started with technological issues, how to fix Zoom, but then we came to really deep uh, philosophical, uh, sometimes psychological issues of the purpose of meetings, future of politics, future of diplomacy. You can join the graduation and celebrate together with them uh, this uh, important closure. They put a lot of efforts and time in this course. Behind this conference, we had a great team. Uh, our creative lab led by uh, Milica in Belgrade, uh, Daria, our tech experts, some of them you met, uh, Arvin, but also Fire, Maya, who was running the help desk, uh, George, who did a lot of, lot of support behind, behind it, Stefan, Dylan, uh, who worked on the preparation of the event. Great teamwork, which basically was amplified by, by your great uh, inputs today. Therefore, thank you for joining us on this exciting journey on the future of meeting. Stay tuned and stay safe. All the best. Have a nice evening, day, or wherever you are located. Bye. Bye-bye.